Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the uh, Co-Survivor Delicious Family Nights session. My name is Ian McKay. I am a co-survivor since uh, 2018. Um, been a co-facilitator for the male uh, co-survivor virtual hangouts for the last year for Young Survival Coalition. Uh, so uh, participant in the 2019 Tour de Pink. Um, so been around the YSC for a little bit and uh, happy to be here, happy to be part of this uh, event. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Lily Padilla. She's the author of Anti-Cancer Habits and Anti-Inflammatory Nutrition. She is a uh, uh, certified uh, in Chinese nutritional therapy, uh, holistic uh, nutrition chef. Um, so I'd like to turn it over to her. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lily. Thank you so uh, much. Looking forward. I'm already hungry looking at uh, the food here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're going to see delicious recipes today and nutrition. You know, a lot of the nutritional recipes, that's my forte. So thank you so much, Ian. Okay, so welcome, everyone. And um, I don't know if I can have a full screen uh, or I have to just put it in. Hold on a second. Uh, there you go. I just, me, okay, perfect. Yeah. I'm just going to jump in here for just a second here. Um, sure. I, I'm just going to let everybody know. Uh, we're going to let Lily do her uh, presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, we'll do my best to bring them up to her as we need to, but we'll do a, a, a question and answer at the end in the last 10 minutes or so. Um, so yeah. yeah, again, put your questions in the chat and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Thank you. Sorry, okay. back to you, Lily. Well, thank you so much. So welcome everyone to my kitchen. Um, this is Lily Padilla and I am um, very excited. I'm gonna be sharing part of my presentation and a little video about cooking and you know making delicious recipes. But I, I just wanna uh, first of all, thank you for taking action and being here and sharing uh, time with us. Uh, this is very, very important. As a cancer survivor myself of 18 years, I know that we need community, that we need support and this is amazing this is an amazing event so without further ado i'm just going to start sharing my uh, presentation um let's go back to the beginning so today we're going to be speaking about nutritional cooking and um, delicious recipes that are very much helpful for gut health digestion and immunity which is uh, exactly what i um focus on 18 years ago. I focus on um, my digestion and uh, definitely in, um, boosting my immune system. Um, so that's why I decided to, um, you know, study nutrition, but uh, holistic nutrition. And, and that's what transformed my life. This is me 18 years ago. And like I was saying, I, I focus on the power of real food, nutritional foods and absorption of nutrients because I, fortunately, I had, um, you know, my, uh, for the surgery and everything, my absorption was very poor. So I needed to learn to create um, ways of absorbing nutrients really well. And I did. Um, that's why I'm here 18 years ago, 18 years later, I'm sorry. Uh, although my, in my case, they gave me two years of life, you know, uh, according to the statistics, but here I am. And that's when I started actually writing my book. So this is part of my book. This is my information. If you want to send me a note or if you uh, have questions and that are private or whatever, you can email me and I'll be glad to respond to your questions. Um, so um, yes, my uh, purpose now is to actually support others. That's why I became a certified integrated nutrition coach and you know, all that stuff. But in reality, food is my main thing. So I do love food and um, I know that from plant to plate is the best way to go. So like my nutritional uh, salads are not that difficult. I, I actually wash the ingredients beforehand, uh, like when I shop, at the same time I shop and I wash ingredients and then I create like a salad bar in my refrigerator. That's one of the main things. So these delicious recipes can be um, actually go directly from plant to plate, but it's very powerful to have steps to actually uh, cook more and so we cook more when we actually wash um, or have one or two steps ahead of time done and that's the best thing to do. Um, so right now you can see that I have a lot of um, 
uh, stews or things, uh, recipes that are very powerful for um, helping the person to actually boost the energy and boost immunity. So these are mainly foods that contain a lot of fiber. And you will see in my sample recipes, very easy to make, but you can have, you can request the sample recipes, um, the full recipe to my email. This is my email. Um, I, I'll send it to you um, so that you can see everything. But feeding your good, your gut bacteria, or yeah, good bacteria, not, the, not all the bacteria that we have is good. But for the most part, the bacteria that we have is actually good. And they help us to be healthy and, um, and to um, actually thrive. But in reality, for cooking, we want to find that balance. Everyone is different, so we want to find a balance in between the different flavors. Um, like uh, different foods will have a different flavor. Per se, um, onions and ginger and garlic are pungent. Um, you know, but uh, the celery or the dandelions are bitter. So when you want to have um, a good combination, you want to have the five flavors in one dish, if possible. Um, if you do the five flavors in one dish, you will be actually helping to balance your chemistry. That's why we feel more satisfied when we are actually cooking with the five flavors in mind. So if I decide to cook with the five flavors, I bear in mind uh, different spices, and different um, things that are actually very helpful for finding those um, five flavors, like the onions, like the garlics, like the spices, right? So each spice, like chili peppers, um, you know, that tend to be very hot. But if I put lemon when I, in, a, in a recipe where I have chili peppers, then the lemon will cool off and will balance the heat. And not only the heat, uh, because too much heat, especially after having radiation or, or, or chemotherapy like I did, uh, too much heat was actually giving me trouble in other organs. So learning to find that balance, it was crucial for me at that time. But yeah, so I utilized a lot of the salary, um, salary seeds, oregano, uh, along with uh, thyme, um, cumin, and of course, to make delicious dishes, my chimichurri. So chimichurri, kind of like that. This chimichurri is really delicious, um, and it makes your dishes very, very powerful. If I want to add a little bit of salt and um, maybe um, that uh, spice also, so some capers actually help me to create many, many of the dishes that I use, um, along with ginger. So ginger is probably one of my major helpers, um, and, and it's so delicious in soups. As you will see today, I create like a base for a quick soup utilizing these guys, and I make a broth. So let's just share the presentation one more time so that you can grasp a better idea of the five flavors. So remember, pungent will be the onions, ginger, garlic, chili. You know, bitter can be salary or just salary sticks or salary root, um, dandelions, endives, and radicchio. If you don't know about endives and radicchio, you might want to learn more. These two guys are extremely good for lowering um, inflammation, and they are actually anti-cancer. Well, this one is one of the major ones, anti-cancer in research. Uh, it's one of the best foods for lowering cancer cells. But, of course, we want to focus with um, the other flavors. Sour would be one of the best ones. Like I was saying, um, lemon, lemon juice, uh, lemon zest tend to be a little bitter sour. But those give us excellent flavors. So just bear in mind that you want to have the five flavors to find that balance. Um, and, and easy delicious cooking, uh, you know, it, it, they deliver a message. So let's go how, how the message will be delivered. So when you have something that you're cooking pungent, um, you will influence your lungs and your sinuses, meaning there is a message that goes directly toward um, some organs or systems in the body when we are utilizing some flavors. So the flavors is not just for flavor. When we talk in nutritional cooking, when I, when I was actually in training, I was amazed how the um, ancient um, cooking, like Chinese nutritional therapy, like Ayurveda, they talk about this very much in depth to control conditions in the body or to help conditions in the body. And so I have been using this for, you know, almost 18 years. And, um, you know, I can find my balance back and forth, back and forth. And if I feel that I'm falling off the wagon for any reason, 
I go back to cook with the five flavors in mind and th that really helps me. So there are many dishes that can be, uh, these are just a few samples of course, but like I was saying, radicchio per se and the lions, they have an influence in the heart and the liver and the gallbladder. So, you know, cleansing my liver has been one of the major things that I do every six months or every year at least. And certainly, um, you know, because all the toxicity that we have around, but um, also because your body filters um, are very important. So let's go back here. So now let's go, let's put it in practice. So when we put it in practice and we do like one pot um, meals are very, very important because this is a very easy way to create and you will have this recipe, by the way, I'll send it to you if you just um, email me, like I was saying, this is my email, request the, the, the recipes, I'll be glad to email them to you. But anyhow, you will see part of the recipe right here. Um, so one pot meal are very easy to digest and that's something that we want to keep in mind. So here's part of the recipe. You have many ingredients in there because it's one pot. You throw everything in the pot. And the same time that you throw everything in the pot, you can put your spices. So it's very important that you um, actually know that the coriander, the cinnamon, the red chili peppers, they are all hot. So I'm putting actually other things that are cooling in the pot to actually balance, you know, like the lemon juice right there. So it's very important to create a very powerful pot, but to make it nutritious. How I'm making it nutritious right here? You, you see shiitake or maitake mushrooms right here. Besides the turkey, and you can make it with turkey or without the turkey. It can be a vegan, uh, vegan if you just take away the turkey. But if you want to have it with animal protein and have more protein, you can do the garbanzo beans, the turkey, and certainly the mushrooms. And the rest is very easy. You just cut them and chop them up, wash them really well, and have them ready. But you see this here? Kelp seaweed. The kelp seaweed is very important to actually... Uh, alkalinize the pH of the blood of the person. So in Asia, they have been using seaweeds for many reasons, but one of them is because it actually helps us to balance the chemistry as well and make us feel better. It mineralizes the body. So we want to mineralize the body by utilizing more uh, seaweeds, especially kelp, which is highly anti-inflammatory, but also we wanna put the spices and the herbs, like the sample. So um, I, I have, these are the ingredients, um, but you can have more, think about, if you have any questions about this uh, recipe, please let me know, just write the questions in the chat box. But you can have many recipes, but just think what is the purpose of this? The purpose of having all these ingredients is to have definitely I'm sorry, I'm just going back to the other one. <laughs> uh, of all these ingredients is to have um, actually a lot of the fibers together um, and make it easy as, as, as you create a one pot meal. Uh, but then when you have all, everything there together and the five flavors go together in there, you're acquiring something very important. You are making it easy to digest and to assimilate because everything is in one pot requires less enzymes, meaning the fire of the pot is like your stomach. When you put different different foods in different times, it's very hard because you require more enzymes. So if you have an, a very uh, digestion that is not that easy, so it's better to do one pot meals, like one soup, like one is two, you know, all that stuff is almost pre-digesting or require less enzymes. So we know the diversity of bacteria is what makes us very healthy. So the more fiber you have in one pot, then uh, the better, or in any meal, the better you will do. But in one pot meal, it's much easier to put all these type of fibers and all these ingredients than actually creating three different, uh, cooking in three different pots. So for practicality, think about the longevity is also very important for you, lowering inflammation. So enzymes, you know, uh, and, and, and diversity of bacteria feeds from diversity of uh, uh, um, uh, foods that contain high fiber. So here's another one that is a very delicious recipe. It's one of my uh, powerful um, cruciferous soup. As we know, cruciferous are highly anti-cancer and they're highly anti-inflammatory. So when I do this uh, sample recipe, it's very quick again because it's just having the dish, the, the ingredients and uh, cooking it uh, in, in one pot. Again, 
the fiber and, and the spices will contribute to lower the inflammation because the fiber is what's gonna feed the bacteria. Remember, the healthy bacteria and or your called your microbiome feeds from a lot of the fibers. So organic sprouted is another way to go in salads. Like this is sprouted beans, you don't even have to cook them. You just sprout this or buy sprouted beans like this and, and they are soft to touch and you can actually cook them, uh, yeah, put them in salads and, and have more enzymes and vitality. So I'll show you some of the samples in a moment. But think about lowering inflammation. Inflammation and cancer are very much linked. Actually, cancer is a pro-inflammatory, uh, it's an inflammatory disease. So we know that we want to actually uh, lower the inflammation, but these are some of the things that contribute to the inflammation, which is poor lifestyle um, or having a low diversity of bacteria, low amount of enzymes, and an imbalanced microbiome. So if you don't know what the microbiome is, I'm going to just mention it very quickly because we have only a certain amount of time. But in reality, um, the more we lower inflammation, which is my forte, of course, I have been doing this for 18 years, I actually understand that the body filters are the ones that are in the center of lowering inflammation. So this is a healthy cell that has the interstitial space healthy, that's the color. When the liver, the kidneys, and the lungs are working properly and filtering the blood and filtering all the toxicity and the pollution. But over here we find an acidic interstitial space. Look at the color, look at how polluted this is. So this cell is more acidic and by itself that, that acids contribute to inflammation. So we wanna eat more alkaline and we wanna actually clean the body filters as much as we can. And that job is done by fiber, with fiber. And this is one of the major things. When we change you know, the filters in our house, we know we need it. It's same thing in the car, but we could, with our own filters, the only thing that we can do is clean them. So, so to clean the body filters is to have health and, and to actually um, lower the acidity will actually contribute to better digestion. So we want to actually, uh, you know, think about our body as an environment for good bacteria. So it's an ecosystem and as an ecosystem, we want to feed them. It's a, it's a relationship that we develop with the bacteria and that actually creates a good uh, environment for us and for them. So when we eat meals like this, this is a delicious meal that is very easy. This is my guacamole that is just with tomatoes, cilantro, a little bit of garlic, lemon juice, uh, guacamole, or avocado, of course, and baby tomatoes. It's very easy to make and have it, you know, if you put enough lemon on it, lemon juice and a pinch of salt, it will last a few days in the refrigerator if you have it in airtight containers. So micro microgreens like this microgreens you can find them in trader joe's you can find them in whole foods and you can find them at the farmers markets nowadays they contribute to give us more enzymes so we want to have more vitamins more enzymes from microgreens they combine really well with any kind of beans or or a whole grain like a quinoa or with brown rice um, so this is very easy to put together for a quick lunch but the, all the uh, raw foods are giving you also a, a lot of the vitamins and minerals plus the enzymes, and that will help us to lower inflammation as well. So when we think about food, fresh foods, we wanna think about some enzymes, we wanna think about sprouts, fruits, vegetables, definitely that's what's gonna help us to have more alkaline blood pH, uh, or the pH of the blood to be more alkaline. So an anti-inflammatory foods, we have a huge list that I combine in those soups and many of the stews that I make. Um, and so cruciferous vegetables being the number one, mushrooms, of course, shiitake, maitake, um, white mushrooms, onions, chives, asparagus, cabbage, bok choy, kale, of course, but a lot of people, they eat the kale, but they don't eat the collard greens. Collard greens make a huge difference in how we clean our uh, bowels and how we protect our liver because they contain a lot of the sulfur. Broccoli, uh, sprouts, cauliflower, watercress, and turnips are another ones that are really good. So they all contain what's called the glucosinolates or um, the indole-3, which are anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer. 
but so is um the seaweeds the seaweeds are extremely important and alkaline like i was saying before so are the spices that i was showing you like, like the salary seeds you know um the oregano turmeric turmeric being one of the most anti-inflammatory when you combine turmeric with cumin cilantro and uh, definitely the ginger you make like a poof like a really powerful anti-inflammatory meal right there so um, we know that there are things that increase the inflammation we want to avoid those that are right there in the like the heavy uh, sugars soft drinks uh, processed foods high fructose corn syrup you know uh, you want to avoid some of those but or a lot of those but uh, in reality you want to uh, make sure that you avoid a little bit of the pro-inflammatory oils which are more of the omega-6 uh, oils um, uh, and or GMO oils also so um, but the acidic uh, foods you know will contribute to pump up more um, and create uh, more of the infectious or parasites areas in the body so an unhealthy microbiome being one of the main things that actually contribute to inflammation so you want to avoid those so now we know that um, in science cooking matters to your gut health so that means that not everything has to be raw or too much raw can actually not be that healthy for the gut bacteria as we were thinking so um, many studies as you will see they have been showing that but the microbiome so that you know is a trillions of community that we host in our digestive tract in our mouth eyes everywhere in the body we have we have 10 times more microbial cells than human cells and that is huge um, so when we talk about cooking that matters to our bacteria and especially the bacteria in the gut we want to make sure that the process of cooking um, alter nutrients and make the food more digestible um, especially when there are spices and this is one of the studies according to the um, to the uh, study from Harvard University where they show um, I, I take a lot of classes with them and, and with um, USC San Diego and San Francisco also because they have a microbiome department so we want to update ourselves and we take classes with them that's why I, I know that this study was like wow uh, our bacteria does better with cooked foods than with raw foods this is very interesting I didn't know that and especially if you have a sensitive digestion this is very important to know so um, diversity of colors of course and diversity of fibers this is what I'm talking about today the main subject is to cook for actually bring more vegetables fruits beans grains nuts and spices into our tables and uh, the more colorful think about color Think about uh, you know how many colors you when you go shopping but why is this important let's look at this like I was saying this is one of the images that we created it with my designer because when I was taking the classes I realized wait so we have 99% of the body is microbial genes so we only have 1% of human genes to um, worry in nutrition so I have to not worry but I have to bear in mind that 99% of my cells, my genes, will feed, will need other other requirements, not just as the same as the human genes. So my my purpose being to learn or to teach to people to nurture their microbiome really well, because this is one of the um, activities. Um, actually, uh, one of the um, studies were talk about how the microbiota or microbiome significantly impact our our health. So all these scientific studies, they are actually talking about including cancer. So let's talk about ca breast cancer for a moment and nutrition. We know now in science that the person that has uh, breast cancer has a different microbiome in their breast than the person that doesn't. So that was very interesting. And so how is the diet influencing the bacteria in the breast because we have a specific bacteria in the breast and this is very interesting because we can see how uh, what kind of bacteria we have according to what we eat so this these bacteria are uh, different names um, uh, they're actually uh, feeding according to what we eat so when we have a Mediterranean diet actually we have a much healthier um, microbiome in the breast than when we don't this was one of the studies so what we eat also affect the microbiome of the breast and that's one of the points that I was going to make so diet is strongly influencer 
uh, of the gut breast microbiome there is a cr cross communication between your gut and your breast and those guys those microbes those bacteria um they actually matter to us and they actually have in a specific way of eating so they feed or they get nutrients and energy from what we eat so this is very important to learn the, the studies and if you want these studies i'll be glad to send it to you all what you need to do is to email me again to this my email and i'll be glad to send you the full studies um but there are plenty of them so what with that in mind i have created my nutritious creamy broccoli dip which is extremely this easy to make as pumpkin seeds as uh the flaxseed ground uh two bags of broccoli florets um himalayan salt lemon juice you know and make it creamy in your blender three tablespoons of hemp seeds this is really good protein right there three tablespoons of hemp seeds will give you 10 grams of protein plus the quarter of a cup of pumpkin seeds right here will give you nine grams of protein so you're having quite a bit 19 grams of protein for a dish like this this is not bad and you can make it in your blender uh, very easily or in your food processor I, I can send you the full recipe, the full, yeah, uh, it's very easy to make, but it's delicious also, and you can make it with cashews if you want instead, but pumpkin seeds have those anti-inflammatory compounds that are very important, and the zinc, so I'm focusing on minerals when I create my dishes, um, and so that's why I just wanted to give you a heads up with this, um, I'm going to share one of my videos, do we have time for a video, like five minutes? It looks like we're down to the last two minutes here for the. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the... Okay, because I can share a quick video if if they, if they want to see how I create one of the dishes and the amount of vegetables that I use. But it's okay. Let's just finish this. Um, so the 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 power of the fiber is to create short chain fatty acids, and this is what we want. And these studies actually they are telling us that we can boost our immune system when we create those short chain fatty acids. So remember, your microbiome and nutrition is very, very important because they help you to assimilate your nutrients of what you are eating. It's not only what we eat, but how we assimilate those nutrients. Same thing with um, the good, uh, the immune system. If you have that, you know, chemo brain that we all have when we have the treatments, then think about nurturing your microbiome really well because the more you have your uh, this type of recipes the better you will do and so i created also my herbal pesto which you're gonna have that recipe very easy to make also uh, a lot of the parsley basil hemp seeds again watercress which is a delicious leaf actually similar to spinach um which um actually creates a, lo a lot of the anti-inflammatory compounds and this goes really well with salads with the steamed vegetables with quinoa um, with anything that you are you you feel like uh, making again um, if you just want the recipes um, I, I'll be glad to send it to you um, this is my email this is my website um, and um, if you have questions um, this is the moment that our moderator Ian is going to help us with the questions so please go ahead Ian. Ian I cannot hear you there we go my screen <laughs> switched over there totally no uh, problem so it doesn't look like we got any uh, questions here. So, um, oh, uh, Ami, um, you got something to type into the chat there? Um, I don't think they have it. Uh, okay, good books and resources to read. Uh, it's from Nicole. Do you have any good books or resources to read on holistic oh. nutrition, I believe? Oh, yeah. Uh, besides my book, yeah, in my book, you will find uh, plenty of the uh, recipes, but also you will find techniques. But other books that I, I just don't read a lot of books, I take a lot of the classes. But uh, if you want a good book, maybe um, from Dr. Mark Hyman, he has several books um, in nutrition. Yeah. Very good. Uh, and Ami writes, uh, storage of stews and freezing portions, how long? uh how long can we do that and good how question. how do we store them good question um i usually uh, is, uh freeze um only in one side meal meaning let me just show you one of them so that i have like this is my frozen soup so i have a lot of the sorry i was just taking it out of the freezers to show you so so you can see that i have a lot of these guys this is one of my um uh, detox soups that I make with beets and different things in there. 
Um, actually, the more you freeze one size meal, like this is one size meal for me, then um, they will last longer because you only open it when you're going to eat that size, right? So you have to defrost it. It's perfect for one size. But usually soups like this that it has some roots on it, it will last like um, with good flavor and nutrients no more than a month, I will say. You know, it's usually three weeks, four weeks um, for soups. For stews, they can last similar depending what it is. If you have animal uh, protein in there, um, definitely uh, a little bit like maybe three weeks maximum because otherwise the, the meat will actually change textures. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? We have one last question too, uh, just continuing. Uh, what about washing veggies with water and what else, especially when not buying organic? Is there something that goes in with the water? You want to use any additives to the water to Definitely. help with that cleaning? Of course, yes. Um, I usually put vinegar. So vinegar is my to-go. Uh, for two cups of water, I usually put uh, two tablespoons of vinegar. Um, so it's like a one ratio, one to one. Um, but it all depends on uh, what, what are we talking about. Most vegetables, they go really well, but some of them I have to scrub them really well. So I wash them, then I scrub them, and then I put them in water with vinegar for a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was very insightful. Uh, and uh, I was happy to be able to snag a couple of those recipes just so I can uh, give those a try here this uh, weekend. Yeah, no problem. You know what? I, I will be glad to, um, if, if you don't, I think we can uh, have like two minutes to show the video very quickly. But I also would like to send people um, their recipe. Um, so if they can, uh, so here is a part of the video. I'm just going to start it very quickly. This, this is to show you when I'm making soups. To give you an idea of, this is Lily again, to give you an idea of how to cook um, lentils or beans um, with uh, the vegetables, the ratios. So these are um, two cups of black lentils boiling for like 15 minutes and I added it. Um, of course, I soaked them overnight. And this is something that I want to clarify here. If you have beans or grains, soak them overnight or soak them for six to eight hours, you will have better absorption of nutrients because a lot of the, the acids in that lentil or bean or whatever can actually interfere with the absorption of nutrients. We know that it has a lot of lactins or a lot of uh, phytic acid. So soaking and throwing away that water is the first step. Then I added the garlic, uh, four or five cloves of garlic, and one onion, uh, medium size or small size. But the ratio for vegetables is this. If you can see, this is a large plate with bok choy, kale, uh, celery, and sometimes I add the cabbage. Today I don't have the cabbage. But this I won't add it right now. This base, the beautiful vegetables is pure chlorophyll. I want it to, pres to be preserved, so the vitamins. So I will add them once I'm pleased with the amount of softness of my lentils. So I always check how soft they are. So these ones are not ready yet. But I just wanted to show you what is the ratio and what is a good combination for, of course, anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory uh, purposes. So I will add my mushrooms, more mushrooms, later on. Um, I'll add shiitake or maitake mushrooms. So it has the onions that are anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer, the garlic. It has um, some thyme and um, oregano. Um, and, of course, a lot of greens. <laughs> I will add maybe a carrot, but in this case, I don't want carrot today, so I just wanted to let you know what are the ratios. Um, so, like, this one is at least four or five cups of chopped vegetables, um, and it goes into two cups of lentils. And I will add more vegetables later on if I eat them within the next, maybe the next two servings. So whatever is left, I add new fresh vegetables. Um, so uh, what you see right now here is uh, the stems of kale that I cook the lentils with and some celery um, stems, uh, I'm sorry, leaves. And I will add definitely cilantro at the end with the fresh vegetables. So anyways, I... So I just wanted to share with you how to create a quick pot of beans and greens. Great combination uh, for lowering inflammation, greens and beans. But same thing with the meat. If you're cooking your meat 
you can do your meat and then add the greens at the end to preserve the nutrients. Um, and this is a large pot that I can actually freeze later on part of the soup. Um, but when I defrost, I add leafy greens that are easy to just quick add in it to refresh the soup. So if you want to freeze soups or meals, remember to bring them back into life with fresh vegetables. So add a few fresh leaves. And that's the only thing I, you know, I, I add at the end when I'm serving something that was frozen before. So if you have any other questions, feel free to email me. I'll be glad to talk to you. Or if you have questions, you can do the same. Yep, we dropped uh, Lily's email into the chat there. Uh, so please reach out to her. Thank you so much, Lily, for your presentation today. This was a wonderful look forward to uh, uh, giving a shot at these uh, recipes. They look very tasty. Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, for everybody else, uh, this was our last session uh, or workshop rather for the day. Uh, so we're just requesting that everybody uh, take a shot to go over to the uh, exhibitor hall. Uh, click on the uh, YSC logo at the top left of the screen. Uh, click through all the different vendors. If you haven't seen, there is a um, there is a uh, scavenger hunt through there. So please uh, give that a shot. Uh, see what uh, you can find. Uh, there's a lot of uh, great things from these vendors. Uh, come back tonight. We have the virtual hangouts for uh, various groups, co-survivor and male co-survivor, uh, general and, and such. So uh, that's at 830. And then nine o'clock, we've got the comedy uh, hour. So I look forward to seeing everybody tonight. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>